about time again. I know, to show off uh, some, I <laughs> mean, well, it's a lot, of the new Golden Core releases. So more or less uh, what happened in from late summer till right now. I'm still waiting for the vinyls of Emotional Suicide, uh, their great album that got kind of lost in the early 90s and was reissued by, reissued by Gold Core not uh, too long ago on CD. Uh, yeah, the reviews were all great and I think we sold, I hopefully <laughs> hope we sold a good amount of copies because also the band, even the band is not existing, the members are still really behind what they did back in the 90s and yeah, you sometimes don't find that in uh, bands that are active. So yeah, waiting on that, haven't that here yet, but yeah, you can imagine uh, that there might be another video. Uh, yeah, there's no real, real reason. I mean, you, need, you see my English needs to uh, get refreshed. I'm happy that I had a show with James and Raid last weekend, so I was forced, in, in Holland, so I was forced to speak English a little more. Soon, uh, yeah, the band uh, with two Americans and two Germans will be ready for a release and hopefully after that also for playing festivals, shows, maybe even touring. So my English will be as good as three or four years ago again pretty soon. And of course I need to do more videos. So I keep in the flow. It's, it, I'm not, uh, there's no reason to speak much English when you live in a little village in Germany because nobody is speaking English here, only Felsisch, which is the language here in this area. So let's have a beer together. I have a beer for all the people from Hamburg, Astra, Urtyp, that doesn't mean a clock type. <laughs> okay, this was a bad one. Urtyp means it's the real basic one. I have no clue or it has some more alcohol, I don't know. Let's try it. Uh, it's afternoon, so beer o'clock here in Germany. Even it's dark outside. I hate, I hate that uh, season, to be honest. I don't need Christmas too much, Halloween. There is nothing like that. Too much in Germany going on here. And yeah, hello to people from Florida or wherever. <laughs> the sun is shining right now. I'm really jealous. So there's so much stuff. I won't talk too in deep about everything and like usual I want to start with the CDs. Uh, yeah, I just grabbed them and maybe uh, one of or two of them were already in an older video before I had a video break. <laughs> so let's start with Atlantis Rising from Manila Road. Of course you all know that uh, yeah, 2000, in 2012 uh, Manila Road signed a deal with Golden Core, or was it 2013? No, it was late 2012, for the album Mysterium and two others afterwards, but also for the complete back catalogue uh, until uh, <coughs> um, Playground of the Damned. So we are right now at with Atlantis Rising after we did that great uh, Circus Maximus reissue with DVD. I was I was wondering that there was not much more feedback for that one because of that great DVD. But yeah, it got great reviews, everything was fine. And it also starts again with Atlantis Rising. It's a little rough sounding. I did my best to have to uh, do a little remastering. Yeah, it was the first album uh, recorded by Mark Sheldon in his own studio. And yeah, we all know, it, you can say that in public. <laughs> It took a while until the sound got better. So Atlantis Rising is a rough one, but yeah, people love the songs on it and I, I love some of them too, really much. And yeah, we, we I've added two bonus tracks uh, because uh, there was a kind of pre-production with drum computer that mm, only a few people have ever heard so far and a song from Bang Your Head Festival, in case you remember, this was the first European show of Manila Road in the year 2000. No, there was more than just one. Let me see. Let me see. Oh no, it's three. Sorry, I need the reading glasses because it's not bright enough in here. <laughs> okay, then I did something. Yeah, it's hard to promote that when you do metal, 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 and finally some 
rock, blues rock, maybe heavy rock here and there. Rick Derringer, yeah, the guy who brought you rock and roll, hoochie coo, dee 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 dee. And uh, yeah, what most don't know, hang on Sloopy when he was with the trucks. Then he was with both Winters with Edgar and uh, Johnny. Uh, he was in, in the band and then he became a solo artist. Rock and roll, hoochie coo might have been his biggest hit, a solo hit. So yeah, it's on here too because it's really exciting re-recordings he did in the early 2000s. Uh, but the cool thing is uh, he starts with his earliest career with the trucks. Uh, yeah, to the new days and new days, <laughs> early 2000s. And it has a really cool dry sound with a really groovy drummer. And that groovy for, like you said that back in the 70s, hey, it's groovy. No, a grooving drummer <laughs> is what I wanted to say. So if you are into classic rock and blues rock and yeah, all that kind, check out Rick Derringer and I'm Beyond the Universe is the title. Oh, the cats are fighting. Uh, it's the title I have chosen, like one of the tracks I like most. So I just got the tracks and made this product out of it. I did a little remastering and it sounds really cool. Yeah, I guess everybody knows that we did finally Hammer's Rule. Uh, yeah, of course, only the album and the two additional songs from the EP After the Bomb. The album is called Show No Mercy, like the first Slayer one. And yeah, the second album that some know is not the second album, it's just some demos that should have never been released, but our nice little German idiot, uh, Ingo Nowotny, uh, has released them, though, because he was the Satan in person. Yeah, he was an Horrible record boss and yeah, so we we uh, respected that Hammer's Rule don't want these recordings to be uh, released never ever again. So we didn't, We but we have a perfect uh, vinyl transfer from uh, Patrick Engel and I did the remastering of the already good sounding album. So it's, it's if you are into US metal with uh, one of the best bass players and drummers uh, around playing together like like sometimes it's not even metal what they play, but yeah, all all the rest, the music, guitars, vocals are total metal here, total US metal. This is 1984 and 1985, and one of my all-time favorite US metal bands. There are a few songs when they tried to grab some radio airplay, uh, two or three songs, but still they are great. Uh, but of course, yeah, the first songs. Uh, on uh, side A of the original album for sure and the EP are the best. Yeah, we the, the vinyl will be out soon with a seven inch single inside. That's pretty cool. And yeah, that's the CD with a handwritten set list or just the track list from the singer himself, especially for this release. Yeah, we worked together with the band on that one. Scarecrow, a German band, yeah. It is so funny because there is this, uh, I don't know where it is right now, but this compilation, that rare compilation, German Metal Fighters Part 2, it's a white LP, some photos of the bands and contacts, and it looks really ugly, but the content is great. And this is now the third band from this compilation uh, where Golden Core did a reissue of the complete material. So the first was Tempest, this was even before I was working for Golden Core, I just did that CD and Golden Core uh, were nice enough to understand that the music needs to be released from the band Tempest. Yeah, then we had Poison S, the thrash metal band from Spire, Germany, and now thrash metal again, a young band, Scarecrow. They did an album in 1988 after their compilation appearance on German metal fighters and you... I have no words for that. It's so goddamn unique that some of you will hate it and some of you will understand and love it. Sorry when I say it that way, but I've noticed that before, that there's some uniqueness in some metal bands that, yeah, there is just a, a limited audience available for that. This does not mean that these people are better than others, so don't get me wrong, but I, I would say somebody who is listening to the mainstream metal, even mainstream thrash metal, let's say Slayer, will have, might have problems with that. 
But if you're brave enough and if you want to have an album that yeah, will you will be addicted to the next years. This might be a, uh, one of your choices then. Yeah, it's a little it's it's thrash. Then there is guitar solos, even twin solos that sound like typical the regular heavy metal. And we have vocals that are punk, a mix of DRI and sex pistols or something. And uh, this mix is unique and it's unbelievable. Uh, the album uh, Condemned to be Doomed is a concept album and we were able to get all the 7 inch single tracks, 7 inch single tracks and an unreleased song. So in the end, and of course the sample art song from German Metal Fighter. So in, in the end this, com this CD is nearly 80 minutes long and you have everything these German guys did between 88 and I think 93. Scarecrow, check it out, you will love it or not. Everybody's darling, <laughs> for some reason, maybe just because it's good, is Empire. Uh, you remember it was just a, a demo tape that uh, it has the length of an, yeah, good EP, 25 minutes or so. So we decided just to release a vinyl of that and then all hell breaks loose and people asked, oh, there's no CD, okay. They, so I got back in contact with the guitar player of the band because uh, he did a second demo with a male singer then, uh, Francis Soto was his name, or is it still his name? And uh, yeah, Elke is not singing on these songs. And yeah, we decided on adding some of those. So we have finally a CD with uh, yeah over 40 minutes or something like that it is now. Yeah, so Empire is now available on CD2. If you are into female fronted, very melodic, heavy rock and heavy metal and you are into yeah the more commercial sounding songs of Chastain for example then there's no way you don't you have a chance to live without Empire. And the last one not easy but <laughs> great another rarity from Germany Sacrifice so sacrifice, you would say, but sacrifice, because uh, I thought, okay, German band, 1984. Um, I know that English education is was better 10 years, 20 years later in Germany, but no, this was on purpose because they wanted to sound different, like Def Leppard or Motorhead. So they said, okay, we no, uh, I need to check. Still running, I thought it. Now this was the cat. <laughs> so, so yeah, so sacrifice is a pretty clever name because a little, little later we had the Canadians and yeah, you know, sacrifice and uh, is a name that was used very often. So these guys have sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, like I said before, they were from Germany and they played a really rough, rough and ready version of German metal with really heavy vocals, ah, uh, of course, kind of melodic still, and yeah, but still the material is not thrash or speed at all, it's it's early German heavy metal, and yeah, of course this was also just an EP, uh, you get, you. it's really, 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 really expensive on Discogs, because it's rare and good, that's the big problem, maybe not the cover what we wanted <laughs> to offer, the original cover artwork, of course. Yeah, so and uh, the band found uh, a nice tape with a live show that sounded not too cool when I listened uh, to it first. But after working with it for a week or so, I finally had three songs that really sound powerful now, even if it's just an audience recording. I have no clue how I did it, but it's great. Uh, and then we have a follow-up band on that called Tranquil. Tranquil, not easy. Tranquil in German, I don't know. And yeah, this is three uh, members of Sacrifice plus uh, two more. And it's more progressive heavy rock, uh, I would say, I would call it. Really interesting music. And uh, yeah, you can hear the development uh, of a band on this, how they changed. And that's really interesting. And in the end, the city is golden core again, nearly 80 minutes long. Yeah, again, not for everybody, but if you uh, want to explore the not-so-famous bands of the German metal scene of the 80s, here you are. 
So that's CDs and now the vinyls. We stay in Germany but we go back some years earlier now to 1977. Unbelievable. Uh, oh no, 1976 was it recorded already. The first album of the German band Mass, uh, one of the most underrated bands from Germany, especially when it comes to the history of our music. They are often forgotten and everybody is talking about the Scorpions, except Fargo, Trans, and, but Mass is <laughs> maybe even the oldest. Okay, I know meanwhile, meanwhile, I know that some people thought they were from Switzerland. I don't know why, but they maybe because Tom Warrior uh, had some really good words about mass, and so they thought, okay, maybe it's a band from Switzerland. It ain't. It, this is the mess you all know from albums like Warlaw, for example. Uh, but this one is the first, and of course, it's not heavy metal, it's heavy rock. There's some Sabbath. Uh, aesthetics swimming around a little. <laughs> then there's even a bl heavy blues rock number on it and a nice and funny cover version of Painter Man, which uh, by the way got really great reviews uh, when we did the CD version of this vinyl. Yeah, and uh, yeah, here it is. The cover is absolutely unique. And no, this is not Tony Iommi. That's Günther. <laughs> Yeah, then we it goes on like that. Limerick, it, but okay, mess was easier to promote, but Limerick still, and I say it like that, you can kill me for that, I don't care at all. Not many people still have understood how great this album from 1982 is. It's a German band, It's uh, they sing in German language and they sound at least on 50% of all the songs from this album on tour which was released in 82 on a very, very small label. It sounds like new wave British heavy metal meets what later became Deutsch rock. And uh, yeah, the other 50% are more or less heavy Deutsch rock and a few, a few uh, moments of NDW, Neue Deutsche Welle, but only a little. So don't, don't think about Hohe Berge from Fräulein Menge or bullshit like that. I talk about the real early stuff when this was a, a yeah really interesting and yeah kind of artsy even development in Germany before the industry grabbed some musicians and uh, yeah destroyed it <laughs> like usual yeah Clay Morian already got great reviews in the press uh, the CDs was out on Stormspell Records I think now Golden Core has the vinyl. And uh, it has a different color, I think. Uh, yeah, it, the, 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 the cover is a little different than the CD. And yeah, we are really happy that we were able to offer this vinyl. And the reviews, just read the reviews and you know that it's, it's one of the best female-fronted epic heavy metal brands we have in the world. I just don't just say Europe, in the world and I'm pretty sure uh, yeah, when now after Corona and all that bullshit, I think uh, the band, if the band is able to play live on festivals and stuff, then yeah, things will happen with them for sure because they are simply great and I like them more than some of the yeah praised bands. All the yeah. I don't know if this English was correct, but I think so. Yeah, this a uh, little a little older now. I think three months out is the Morbid Jester album. Uh, yeah, we did the CD and now the vinyl is out too. And yeah, this Ken Kelly cover is amazing. So we put the full painting on the back of the LP. So you are now able to see the full painting. Which uh, yeah, and of course we did the logo of the band. It was on the C on the original CD. It was here, and now it's there much better. <laughs> yeah, and of course this was never released on uh, vinyl because it was a CD only in the, uh, I think in 1904. Mm, oh, I'm really good, 94. Recorded at Dust Studio, you know, Dust Studio. Yeah, just some not really German sounding heavy metal. It's just some, yeah, there's even some US metal moments in it and it's it, it's not thrash, it's not speed, but it's heavy, like hell. So it's not just so heavy metal. It's hot, 
hard to describe. Uh, you just need to listen to it. It is as good as the cover looks. So then we have the heavy rock album from Starstruck, one of the Lost Gamma Records albums. Uh, not lost in case of that uh, you have to pay 100 euros for the original on Discogs, not at all. But uh, yeah, it's one of those albums where people say, oh, nobody needed it back in the days. And then you don't need it now. And I hate that. It's not true because uh, there were, especially young kids really <laughs> loved that we did that reissue with a new back, <laughs> but the original cover. If you are into, yeah, German heavy rock that uh, tries to sound American. Okay, Starstruck was not completely on, I think. Well, I have one last album, and this is another one. Yeah, where, where I have, a, I'm not complaining about people or something, but... Okay, forget what I was saying. Here's a great <laughs> compilation called Heavy Metal Things. Uh, episode 1, Metal from the 80s. And uh, of course it's underground metal on it. It's Manila Road, Kakisak, Wildfire, Malayo, Saints, Anger, Hellbreath, Griffin, Witchfind, Sun, Death, Sphinx and Dark. Wizard. Everything only from the 80s, of course. And yes, I tried to create a cover that looks a little like Stranger Things because, yeah, I want that uh, the young metalheads experience these bands, this, this aesthetics, this best heavy metal music, the underground metal. And yeah, that's why I did that thing. It, of course, it yeah, it wasn't too many reviews in the press because it's a compilation and for the reasons if it's not uh, uh, completely a ra uh, with rarities or exclusive music, it's you, you have a hard time getting reviews for compilation these days. Which is sad because um, when I posted this album on Facebook, people reacted immediately. Oh, the great cover and Oh, that's a really cool idea. And here's the printed inlay. Here's some words about heavy metal in general, <laughs> which was harder to write than writing something about a band because I know that uh, this is a wide audience where I have to write something for. And yeah, this was interesting. And of course, some band photos and stuff. Yeah, that's it. That was the current stuff on golden core and there will be more and there, I was hoping to get a parcel today it was not there but looking uh, on the, what's going on in the next days and weeks uh, it will be hard to make another video for you so that's it I hope you like that golden core uh, update and I hope to see you soon very soon bully bully